Huge retirement planning strategy. No one talks about part two. We're going to clean it up a little bit from what I did last time because uh, uh, some uh, some comments which were very helpful in terms of uh, adjusting things. So let's let's again. That was just a stream of consciousness. What I was doing through that. It's like it just it was a new concept to me, and I said that seems to be working. So let's let's dive, after two days of thinking about this and seeing your comments, let's clean this up some and see where we sh we come out. All right. All right, so let's just go back real quick. We got, uh, we're going to go to the dashboard. Oops. We got $500,000 and uh, $501,000 is our net worth. And that consists of, we got $500,000 roughly and uh, $501,000 in my IRA. And I got one share in a stock account of the S&P 500. I'm fully invested in the index, S&P 500, no bonds, no cash. So I got, I'm averaging, I expect a 7.4% annual return with a standard deviation of 16%. All right, so the Monte Carlo will be, uh, will flow in this nicely in terms of the ability for this to, uh, to last. I don't know. All right, so we ran the, in, the numbers last time and it came out pretty interesting. All right, so let's just go real quick. So I have some people, what about expenses? Look, man, I'm just saying at the end of the day, my total expenses, let's get rid of this real quick. I'm just going to share what I'm talking about. Oops. My total expenses are going to be $4,000 a month. That's it. That covers health insurance. That covers, uh, uh, that's going to cover everything. Some people say, what about taxes? It's included in the, the uh, I'll, I'll show you. So we'll get into that. So that's 4,000 bucks a month is our total expenses. I hope that makes sense. So if we go to retirement and we go to cash flows, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We go to cash flows, retirement cash flows. Our expenses are going to be, you can see, oops, let me go down here a little bit. Yeah, you can see 48,000, 49,000, 51,000, 52, 54, 55. So they're going up by 3% a year for inflation. All right, so that's what's happening. Taxes are coming out of the investment portfolio. So let me show you what I'm talking about here because I get this a lot. And I've showed this to you a bunch of times. So that's okay. I've got a lot of new people on the channel. So, all right, so let's go ending balance by accounts. All right, so until I, well, actually, Let's just go to taxes so I can not nip down the bugs. I get that a lot. You're not showing taxes. It's coming out of the account, man. I'm telling you. All right. So as we sit here today, we have to take $48,000 a year from our portfolio because we don't have any social security until I'm 70 years old. Does that make sense? At 70, I'll take it and we'll get 55000 between Charlotte and me. Until then, we've got to get... We've got to get $50,777 in the first year to come from someplace. And the 2,777 comes from taxes, uh, is for taxes, 48,000 is living expenses. Well, that's gotta come from someplace. It's not showing up in social security, so where does it come from? Well, if we go to ending balance by accounts, we go to withdrawals from accounts, and we'll see we're taking 50,000 a year out. Uh, uh, to, uh, we're, we're spending 40000 a year, but we got to take the bulk of that to include taxes from the IRA. So I'm only pulling $48,000 to live on, but I am pulling the rest for taxes. I hope that makes sense. This is coming out of the taxes. So the IRA, the full distribution isn't just my expense, it's the expense plus the taxes. Same thing happens with Roth conversions. When you're converting to a Roth, it will show you in the software, you're converting 25000 bucks. But if you're if you're not having the taxes come from a taxable account or some other account, it's going to come out from the IRA. I mean, the taxes get paid and they I'm just telling you, the taxes are accounted for in the software. I cannot stress that enough. All right. So essentially what I need here is I need to get I'm going to need 50,000. That's 100, 200, 300 about $375,000 over the next uh, 10 years, essentially nine years to pay the bills until Social Security kicks in because I'm not doing Social Security. All right, so I'm like, hey, that's great, but let's let's take a look at the analysis and let's take a look at, uh, we'll go down here in confidence. So I'm not likely to run out of money, but look at that. If we have a couple of down years here, my, uh, my you know, by the time I'm 69 years old, yeah, by the time I'm 69 years old, if he has a couple, you know, if it goes against me, I only got 19,000 left in my portfolio. Now, there's only a 5% chance of that happening, but that's still a significant, I mean, that's a significant risk. There's only a $19,000 left in my portfolio if I get crunched. And that's where the variability of the Monte Carlo analysis, a 16% standard deviation on a 7.4% uh, rate of return. That that would concern me. I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. And then 25% uh, of the time or less, I only have 166,000 in there. All right, so that's, that's pretty significant. I'm like, I don't know if I like that. So we go over here to... Uh, uh, comparisons 
And let's just say we run and we have a uh, bad decade of growth. I mean, look at this. We're, you know, this right here is a current, and the current is we are down to thirty-one thousand under the. Uh, uh, oh, under the that's if I had a bad decade, we are down to thirty-one thousand by the time I'm 71, uh, 71 years old. That's on average. That's, I don't use this very often because it's just on average, and I, I don't really like the averages. But still, it shows you at the end of the day, a bad decade followed by uh, some negative uh, slow growth, you're down to 31000 bucks, and that's not going to get the job done. If we have a, a flat 0% rate of return, you can see again, you know, I'm down to 103 by the time I'm uh, uh, by the time I'm 71 years old. So I start with 500000 You know, 10 years later, I'm down to 100000 Now, it will always go up at that point because Social Security kicks in, so I'm fine. But still, now if we have a strong growth scenario. You can see that just goes up and up and up. Then, then no problem there. But uh, Fed adverse scenario followed by modest growth. Look at that. So the Fed has a adverse scenario where they're really kicking, you know, we'll say they're fighting inflation, raising interest rates like crazy. I almond stocks don't fight the Fed, uh, both the current and the proposed. If this happens, I am down to zero dollars, if that makes sense. I got no money. I ran out of money on average by the time I'm 69. So I see, I don't like that. So what we want to do then is we're going to say, so this right here is fine. This is the Monte Carlo on on the median. I have 1.75 million at my death to leave to the kids or Charlotte's death because she'll survive me. Actually, it was going to click uh, right here. Uh, this has me taking Social Security at 70. Um, and this has me taking Social Security at, uh, so it looks, taking Social Security at uh, 70 or taking Social Security at my full retirement age. So you definitely want to take Social Security at your full retirement age here. So let's just put that in there. Uh, not going to change a whole lot, but still you can see. All right, so yeah, here we go. So taking Social Security at my full retirement age, I have a 99% probability of success with 1.828 million. If we go back to comparisons, uh, you can see right here with the Fed adverse scenario, um, I'm looking at 2,000 bucks by the time I'm 70. That's not going to get the job done. So I'm like, yeah, I don't like that so much. I know it looks good, but there could be some problems for sure. And that's not good. So all right, let's do this. So what I want to do, again, going back to what my social security is. So if we go back here and I'm saying my income is uh, social security is $2,900 a month for my PIA, my primary insurance amount. And Charlotte says, I think I'd have a thousand bucks a month. All right. So basically between our two social securities, depending on when we take it, it's going to be between, uh, you know, 3,500 and 4,500 a month. So that's going to basically take any kind of income we need off the portfolio because we'll have enough for social security, depending on when we take it. Um, all right. So what I want to do, I want to go to net worth and I want to go and I say, we're going to do two things here. We're going to do half of this. We're going to take, so we got 1,888 shares. So we're going to take half of that and we're going to leave it in the S&P 500. So 1880, 1880 divided by two, 940 shares. All right. So we're going to take 940 shares and we're going to leave it in the S&P 500. And that means we're going to take our 250,000 and annuitize it. Now I need to be clear, need to be, I cannot stress this enough. When you pull money from a, a, your IRA and annuitize it, that is not a taxable event. The annuity is still under the context of an IRA. You're not taking a $250,000 distribution and because you're dropping an annuity, it's taxable as ordinary income. It, it's not how it works. You're still keeping it under the umbrella of the uh, the IRA construct. I hope that makes sense. So I got a lot of people say, oh, but you didn't pay tax on the distribution. You don't have to pay tax on the distribution because it's still going to be a, tr a trusty to trusty transfer. We're transferring it from the S&P 500 at Vanguard to a Vanguard immediate annuity within the context of an IRA. Now, as the income is received, as I get the money off the annuity, that is taxable as ordinary income for sure. So let's just go to Schwab. Another, uh, uh, some folks said, ah, how are you getting a 6%? No, it's good. So we'll look at real um, uh, real distribution scenarios here. And we're going to say we're going to invest 250000 bucks, And we're going to go here, 250000 bucks. We're going to start this. Uh, we'll just start 1st of January. My date of birth will say 0101. Actually, what was my date of birth? I forgot. What did I say my date of birth was here? Uh, family. My date of birth was... Uh, 1157, 1157 in Charlotte's is 1159, 1157 and 1159. So date of birth, 11, one, one, oops, zero, oops, zero, one, zero, one, one, nine, five, seven, male, zero, one, zero, one, one, nine, five, nine, female. All right. And we're going to say we live in Tennessee. 
again, just because we don't want state income tax. Um, and the, the right capital doesn't have uh, the state income tax, correct? So how much will they pay out here? You got to do like that. Boink. Boink. Oops. All right. And we got to do another boink and another boink. All right. Boink. Let's see how much they'll pay. So in this case, they're going to pay uh, monthly income a thousand bucks a month. I don't want. I want twenty years certain. So. Uh, one thousand dollars a month on that 250 so how much that's about a five and a half percent payout right so we got 1016 times 12 divided by 250 that's a five percent payout it's four point eight so less than what i had anticipated it's, it's not a huge amount less but still we'll just say a thousand bucks a month for simplicity all right so we're going to get an annuity of a thousand dollars a month we're going to have income and we're going to have this annuity income of a thousand bucks a month it'll be twelve thousand a year and it's not adjusted for inflation 100% survivor. It looks good there. Sweet. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's just make sure I got everything situated here. We're going to have net worth 250000 in the S&P 500. We're annuitizing a half of that uh, to get an income stream for which uh, we can't outlive. And then uh, we'll, we'll annuitize it where we keep the other half in a cash account to draw on. So what's happening here is we're going to have, let's go to cash flow. So let's look at retirement and see what we got. So it drops a percent of 85%, which I'm still very comfortable with. Let's see confidence. Uh, oops. Again, the confidence goes down quite a bit. Uh, at 69, we have a median of $88,000, which is, is scary, man, uh, because we're keeping it in the S&P 500. But once we start taking Social Security, we're fine. But still, look at that. I mean, you're talking 5% of the time you ran out of money, 25% of the time or less, you only had $37,000. So that, you know, that gets a little bit scary. In fact, when I'm 69, 25% up to 25 percent of the time i only had twenty seven thousand dollars so that's uh that can be dicey if we go to comparisons here and we get a, a fed and we're gonna run out of money yeah look at that we're running out of money uh at 66 67 so you know if, if we have a uh a fed policy that hurts us badly we are running out of money in this case is that necessarily a bad thing i'll show you what i'm talking about a flat <laughs> zero percent rate of return we ran kind of over there out of money at uh, 69 and then we bad decade, uh, we run out of money again. So remember, what does running out of money mean? Well, it means we have no liquid assets, right? But we still have, from a cash flow perspective, <coughs> watch this. Um, so even though we ran out of money, we still had net flow. And this would be hard to say because this is on average. But anyway, so here's our cash flow. And so our income flows are... Social Security for Charlotte at 62, and then for me at 70. Yeah, that's probably not. Let's go to current plan. I want to do a Social Security at full retirement age. Yeah, let's do that. And we'll change it. Okay. Hold on a second. It doesn't look like it changed it, does it? So let's go and. Yeah, okay. So let's go up here to profile. We're going to do income, Social Security. We're going to take it at 67. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let's see what that looks like now. And retirement. Yeah, 100%. Okay, that's good. That's good. So taking Social Security at 67 at full retirement age, uh, we get 100% chance of success, which is good. That means every single time we ran, we had money left. Let's look at the confidence. Yeah, the median there never drops below. It looks like 173. Not one time we have zero. The least we have for 25% or less, or up to 25% of the time, we have 65,000 in the portfolio. So that's still pretty good. Let's go to comparisons. Uh, let's do a bad decade. Yeah, we never run out of money there. We come 65,000. That's not great, but uh, Fediverse, we come pretty close to run out of money in when I'm 67 years old, but I still got more than enough income to live on because Social Security is going to kick in that year. Uh, we go to income, we should only have, yeah, look at that, we have, we're fine. So we never have any shortage at all. 100% of income is stable because it comes from Social Security or annuities. I'm telling you, man, this is a great freaking strategy. This is a great freaking strategy. Expenses, 48000 got your tax payment. Let's take a look at... Uh, the tax is here. Yeah, look at that. So that's, uh, that's, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. All right. So remember, we have reduced by 250,000 bucks. Just FYI, I've taken the annuity out 
uh, there is, so it's not sitting in cash and the stock market like I did before. So that's uh, that's pretty fantastic. My man Sergio was saying Wade Fowles' book uh, talks about an increasing equity portfolio. Um, that that works a lot. Let's look at accounts. Oh, man, I'm stoked by this. I really am. Uh, taxable accounts because our traditional IRA is down to 230 to 182. And then we kick in Social Security. And now it's all being over here in this taxable account, which is growing. If we go to, uh, I think it's an invested account. Yeah, portfolio return. There we go. So here we got uh, beginning balance 302. We made $32,000, $22,000 on 32. Yeah, 6.8% rate of return when you factor in distributions, whatnot. So net cash flow, cash flows is twenty thousand bucks because we got the that's 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 good. That's good. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I I mean, look, man, look at these taxes. Yeah, I mean, that's just let's look at the tax return. Again, twenty seven hundred bucks in taxes in that year. Let's go to two thousand and uh, we'll go down to two thousand twenty seven, twenty eight. $700 in income tax, $61,000 of social security benefits, only 13,000 is taxable. I mean, that's just, oops, let's go to a, uh, and then you got RMDs right here, a 4B as our RMD. Um, yeah, I mean that, look at that. We got $78,000 of social security. We got $28,000 of uh, RMD and annuity distributions. So we have what's that? Uh, Twenty-eight plus seventy-eight. That's one hundred six thousand bucks. We're paying three thousand dollars on one hundred six thousand dollars. That's it, man. That is just beautiful. That is beautiful. All right. So let's. What if we did this? So let's put it in cash instead. I'm just curious. So we'll go to profile. So let's uncheck this. We're going to say we're not going to include in plan. Instead, we're going to put two hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash. All right, so basically what we're doing now is we're saying, okay, we're going to take the $250,000 from the portfolio, and instead of putting the S&P 500, we're just going to move into cash, so we can draw on that. Let's take a look at what this looks like. And now it's not going to make it money. Get 1% a year rate of return on that. Yeah, so still a good probability of success. Um, a lot less uh, upside to lead to the heirs, but 100% uh, probability of success there. Still leaving 400,000 bucks though. And look, watch, watch the confidence will never drop. Yeah, look at that. I mean, we're still sitting at 116,000 median. I mean, you're never coming anywhere near zero. Between five and 95% of the time in our worst year, we get 112 to 123,000 because it's all sitting in cash. If we do comparisons, um, oops, let's do that here. Yeah, we never come close. Well, actually, let's do this. Fed, it shouldn't matter. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so if you do it, put it all in cash and you have a bad decade, it literally matters not uh, because you're not in the market. You, you're having an annuity, but it's not in the market. Now let's go to cash this. Man, I, I, dude, I am on to something. My man, Harry, he, this is freaking awesome. So what you'll see here, my friends, we'll go to additions to accounts. There shouldn't be any here. Yeah, no, but now we got additions to accounts because now our social security uh, and our annuity, our dwarf and our expenses. So we're adding all this back into the accounts. And let's see. I want to go to invest that. So they still got me. Yeah, so it's not making any money here. So what we got to go back doing. Yeah, it's not making any money. It's still sitting in cash. So it's only growing at uh, a 1% clip. So what we got to do then is we got to go to profile. And we got to say, don't touch that. Can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Don't touch this. So how are we going to do that, though? So how is we're going to go to retirement? Because they're taking it from that account. Yeah, so they're taking it from a taxable account. I want the taxable account to be invested still. So how do I do that? Uh, so we got income. We get. We need uh, cash flows. What we'll do? Thirty-six. So we're gonna say. 
Yeah, okay, we'll say 40,000. Okay, bear with me just says it'd be interesting. So I'm going to pause for a second. I don't know how to get it to go back into the, the investment account as opposed to just going to cash. Hmm, this is confusing to me. So I'll email the guys later. Actually, let me try one. I have the, uh, the accounts in this where I don't get how to make it go into the S&P 500 because what's happening here is I have to email, like I said. Uh, what's happening here is I'm we have... If we go to accounts, all right, we're taking money from the uh, savings accounts, as you can see here, the taxable accounts. So we're taking, you know, 160, you know, probably not that, 100,000 bucks, 125,000 bucks, and we'll see the ending balance by accounts. The drawback, so we got 134,000, um, which is in cash. But what I was hoping they would do, and I don't know how to do this, so we'll have to figure this out. What if I go to proposed plan? Will that change anything? Well, maybe that will change them. I bet it won't. I don't think so. So let's just see. Uh, we go to vested asset. Yeah, it's not doing anything. All right. So basically, what's happening here is I'm I'm saving money by not spending it. So essentially, with your social security and your annuity, um, you have additions to accounts. So we have all this money right here later on down the road going back into a taxable account. For some reason, it's defaulting into the savings account and not going into the uh, the investment account, which is too bad. Um, that's uh, I mean, either way, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine. I wish I could do it where they went half went to the savings and the other went into the investment. I don't know how to do that. But worst case scenario, we still have a hundred thousand dollars with a four hundred three thousand liquid net worth at our death. Uh, we talked about the confidence we're never coming close to running out of money. I just don't know how to change it to go back into stocks now. If we go back to here profile um, and we say, well, let's let's cancel this guy here and we'll undo that. And instead we have it coming out from our uh, portfolio. All right, so now we don't have it coming from the cash. We have it coming from the portfolio. We still have the same annuity. Uh, so, so that works kind of the same uh, because anything that's being invested is going back into a, an investment account that's growing with investment rates of return. I don't know why I can't get it on the taxable side, it's weird. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So before we had 100% with 403,000 median uh, liquid net worth. Now I have 100% with 1.39, 1.4 million median liquid net worth. And the reason for that is solely because, uh, A, we don't spend all of our money down for the S&P 500, and B, our accounts, if we go to invested accounts, these guys are growing with uh, the market. A $13,000 portfolio return on $182,000 is about 7% portfolio rate of return. So I'm not sure why I can't get it the other way. Either way, so in this case, so to solve the, the riddle is we have between 400,000 and 1.4 million of liquid net worth at your demise, depending on uh, how you invest your money uh, outside of whatever you do for the annuity, all right? So again, we have 500,000 bucks. We take half of that, put it into an income annuity. We ran the Schwab uh, scenario that says how much can an income annuity pay for the years that we're doing, which is $12,000 a year, joint life, and 20 years period certain, which is what you want to do. Uh, so we know we're getting $12,000 a month, all right, uh, $12,000 a year. So we're taking that, and we're going to go up here to put it into profile. We're going to put it into income. Uh, $12,000 a year, all right? And then we have our Social Security, which is on the high end, I grant you, for me, 2900 is on the high end, but uh, 1000 for Charlotte, that's you know that's not extraordinarily uh, unlikely. It just is not. Now, could you say 2500 per? Yeah, you can do whatever you want, but uh, that's a successful retirement plan. If you do the annuity and put the money in cash and then take the money that you're going to get off uh, when Social Security kicks in, man, you're in a good place. I mean, what, I'm just curious. What if we took Social Security early? Uh, you're just in a good place. You don't have to worry about running out of money. You leave money um, as early as possible. Uh, just, you're in a, yeah, here you still got a million bucks. And if we go back, I mean, that's just, man, that's a good place to be. Um, we want to include this and then exclude this. So we can take Social Security early. So I'm not double up in on the amounts. That's what's going on here. 98. So look at that. We take Social Security early, and we're not invested at all in the stocks. We just have in cash. We have a 98% probability, but only 52,000 liquid net worth, and that's still misleading. Simply because. What? Well, what? Aha! Yes. There we go. Okay. Cool. 
but that will nah, see that's not right because it's still going to take the cash and make it either way we know what the bottom is we know the bottom is that you're going to have uh you know roughly four hundred thousand dollars if you do two hundred fifty thousand to an income annuity and take social security at your full retirement age and the income and the, and the two hundred fifty thousand is left in cash or you could have 1.4 million if you do uh, take 250,000, leave the rest in stocks and put that 250,000 uh, in, into an income annuity. And then whatever you have above and beyond the expending when Social Security kicks in uh, goes into the stock market as well. You never run out of money. You have a decent amount of living. Um, I love it, man. I think it's a freaking great strategy. It deals with uh, uh, the sequence of return risk. Man, I'd love to hear some your thoughts on this. I, uh, I'm a fan. I am absolutely a fan. So, all right, I'll let you guys talk. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. So let me know. Thanks, now.